Right, we're here at the field to do a little bit more antenna testing. And the idea is I'm gonna fly way up there behind these trees which are in front of me, right to the end. And then I'm gonna loop round and fly behind those trees at the back. And I've got four quads with different antennas on. So I've got the Bangard, which I've just hastily stuck the stock DJI antennas. I have somewhat randomly my juice mode, which is running a uh, Strix antenna and the TBS Triumph Pro antenna. And then I have this guy, which has got the Lumineer Axi 2s on it. And to make things interesting, to make things interesting, I've also got this guy, which has got little tiny linear antennas on it. And I've been finding the performance on these really good. So I'm curious as to see how it actually does. And all of this testing will be running using the DJI antennas with the true IC little stubbies on them, uh, because that's how I'm running my DJI goggles. Simple because the stubbies are so small that you don't have to remove them. I am also going to do one test with these guys, which are the True RC XR for DJI. And I've used these a couple of times, but then I gave up using them um, because while in the sort of heavy forests that I've been flying around, they do add a little bit of penetration. Um, the difference is so sort of minimal. Um, it doesn't really sort of change the areas that I can fly in. You know, if I'm struggling for um, reception in one area, this will improve it a little bit, but it won't make it flyable for me, if that makes sense. But this sort of area should suit these guys very well. But when I do this test, as I go back around myself, I'm going to basically turn around just to give these guys um, a chance. And in this sort of area, they should really shine. And if they don't, we've got a problem. So. And as a final point, I've got some Lollipop V3s, which I'll stick on the juice mode when I finish testing that. So all I'm going to do is tootle up here, tootle around and let's see how they do. So I'm going to start off by showing you the Lollipop V3 on one of my quads. And this is basically just to show you the route that I take, because when I actually show you the testing, I'm going to crop to as close as I can get to the areas where I suffer um, low megabits per second, which is basically just coming up to here. And it's generally pretty low around this area. And then everything sort of gets okay again. And then I basically loop round. Signals still really strong around most of these areas other than a few flickers behind the trees and then I'm approaching sort of the left of where I'm sat and it's important to know that I'm sitting basically while doing this testing apart from the patch antenna where I was stood up and trying to track it with my head and now we're going into another sort of low signal area where these power lines are and the, again the megabits flashing upon the screen are just the lowest megabits per second recorded on this particular run in this particular area. So when I come on to the actual individual testing where you'll see them all together, just note that I've cropped the footage and the SRT file just to show the poor um, megabits per second in that particular area. On the test run, I also did this sort of extra loop through these trees behind me, but all of the antennas did absolutely fine in this area, so I didn't bother to include that in the actual testing. So we're off, and if you want to compare the Lollipop V3, you'll have to skip back. But as you can see, I come round this corner where the bad reception is. 
And you can see on this particular run, the DJI did worst, followed by the Axi. And the DJI to note has got a massive battery on it, um, so that might be impairing its performance. But then again, we go to the other part of the run where the reception is really poor. And at this point, they're all getting relatively decent reception. And then we go into this other area, which is really just behind me. And you see the axis really struggles and the linear antenna is in its element. And this is the patch antenna versus the DJI stock antennas. And you'll see that straight in front of me, I'm getting pretty much double the megabits per second. And I am trying to follow this run with my head um, and basically track the quad with the patch antenna. But you'll see what happens when I fail to do that in a second when we come to this area to the left of me. And the patch antenna is obviously doing really well up until this point. And then you'll see it really dips down and does really poorly in this area. And I'm guessing this is an anomal anomaly and I'm basically just not tracking its beam well enough. And you can see at this point it drops down to 1.6 megabits per second, which is basically oh shit, you're about to fall out of the sky. To be honest with you, I'm back to sort of where I started in this testing. These fancy antennas from um, Lumineer, the 100 quid axes, um, and all the rest of it, they just don't perform well on the DJI system, neither on the goggles, which I tested previously, or in this case, um, on the quad itself. And the interesting thing for me is that the linear antenna in most of the areas is really, really good. It's not the best, but it matches the others in most areas and does better than, than the majority of them. The other thing is there's the, the quad that has the ready-made RC and the TBS also posts pretty good results. And I think that is probably down to the ready-made RC antenna as opposed to the TBS one, which presumably is relatively similar to the axes and um, antennas like that. But like all of this sort of stuff, like all of this testing, the range cl claims that these guys are making are absolute nonsense. And I suppose the point, and the point that I should raise is that after doing this testing, I went and flew my quad and the quad I flew was the one with the Axie antenna on, which was the one that was performing worse throughout most of this testing. And it didn't bother me in the slightest because the differences that we're talking about are basically fractions of a second where it drops to that really low level. And albeit another antenna might have had another megabit per second or another couple of megabits per second at that particular point it didn't really affect me in any major way that i would really prefer one antenna over the other 